Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from the world. My name is Paul Richardson, and I work for a company called Sales Layer. Today, we're going to be taking you through product content, the gateway to the digital shelf era, from product information management to product information intelligence. Now, I find that a good place to start is always what is product information management, or otherwise known as PIM. It is a software solution that allows you to centralize, analyze, and enrich all product information and digital assets, whether that be Excel sheets, uh, CSVs, uh, CMS systems, ERP uh, data, or even uh, website information and uh, marketplace stuff as well. And this is gonna help us better understand why it is so relevant in today's world. The first thing to look at for any company is what is your main goal? Is it to centralize all your product information and digital assets in one place? Is it to eliminate unnecessary work and save time for everyone within the company, create catalogs in a matter of seconds, or just simply connect a unified uh, set of product information and digital assets to all of your different sales channels globally? Now, this can be quite jarring for some companies. Uh, we find that sometimes you'll walk into a project not knowing that one, you're actually looking for a system like this, or two, you've got too many systems internally. That means that you're gonna to have to decide what is actually necessary right now and what is necessary for later on, okay? Again, this is just something that we go through with every single customer is completely common, okay? The pillars of the digital shelf. So we've got your omni-channel fragmentation, personalization, new business models, and product experience and customer experience. These are all really, really important. Omni-channel is more important in today's day than any, any, time, any other time in history. Omnichannel simply means not just connecting out to a simple website that I've got or turning that into an actual e-commerce. Multiple e-commerce is split between B2B and B2C. How do you manage all of those data sets, manage it in a system like ours, where you can have uh, a data set for um, my simple website data, for my catalog, for my marketplaces, uh, Everything has its own unique touch. Every marketplace has, a, ha, has strict restrictions on what you can actually upload and what you can't. Something may look better in your, in your, uh, in your own website for SEO purposes. So being able to then fragment and personalize that data to the level that you are happy with, but also that your customers are happy with. Because again, that goes down to the customer experience on your website or with your products if you're inside a marketplace or any of that sort of stuff as well how to get the upper hand. So we like to consider ourselves as a 360 degree product, okay? We cover every single aspect of product information and digital assets. So it's about the analytics of the data, product content, and then turning that product content and analytics into actual insightful data that the company can then use to better an ROI or to better a customer's experience with them according to the market, we actually need to better our product info based on the analytics that we've seen with our product data, our product content, or the visibility in the digital shelf. So what this means is if I'm connecting out to a market, to several different marketplaces, which is the case for, for most of the customers, right? Um, but also I'm connecting with my website. How do I know what data is going to uh, what marketplace? How do I know that that data has been verified or is correct? The marketplace has accepted that. How do I know that the data on my website connects with what my marketing team's vision is for SEO? It is, it, it's honestly a, a lot to, to, to consider and a, and, a, and a lot to take in, but honestly, you can then take all of that data and turn it into meaningful insight into what actually your customers require, what your uh, different teams internally require, and how all of that can then come together nice and easy. The evolution of traditional product information management. So as I said in the beginning, yes, we're a PIM, but as technology is and software is these days, we're always looking to evolve, okay? So traditional linear product information management is to consolidate all the information in one place, to enrich that information, like we were describing before in the analytics section. So 
and setting information into different places or needing multiple product descriptions in different formats. Excuse me, and then connecting out to uh, the, the, the different sales channels that you may have. But instead, we're then looking more towards product intelligence information. So it's not a new product by any stretch of the imagination. It's just a different way of looking at things. It's just the way that things are starting to evolve. Okay, so it's about full collaboration between everybody within the business. So things like workflows and permissions to edit. So if I'm an, if I'm an editor in the company and I've got two other people that one is maybe uh, a marketing personnel, so, uh, and the other is my boss who needs to approve this information before it's allowed to go out on sales channels. This just simply means that if I'm in charge of uploading the data, I can do so. Once I'm done with my job, then in, that thing gets sent as a task to my colleague who then enriches the information with whatever they need to. And once they are done, that thing gets passed on to our boss to say, hey, listen, can we get this approved so that this can then go live on the uh, on all of our sales channels or a particular sales channels, a uh, sales channel, apologies. <laughs> Intelligence insights, quality score, insight trends and error detection. The, the most important out of all of those three is always error, error detection. Error detection is fundamental these days, right? So simple things like making sure the text is written uh, without any mistakes. So when you're writing you know, text and all of a sudden something pops up and you're like, oh, I put uh, uh, DAE instead of THE, right? Simple things like that. Um, additionally, error, error detection can also move on to what you're actually sending through to uh, a marketplace or, or, or a website or any of that sort of stuff, or even your catalog. It is really, really important to make sure that the data is actually set out in the right way. Inside trends and quality score. Now, inside trends could be what is actually now trending on the market and what should I be putting as my first position or my first 10 positions as products that I show customers when they first come to my website. And quality score, again, is about enriching that data so that end customers trust your website more than anybody else's. Okay, so me as a consumer, if I look at a website that has little product info as opposed to a ton of product info, I'm not going to read all that product info, but it looks really good. It looks enticing. It makes me want to trust them more. Okay, it makes me want to buy from them, which is really, really important. Hyper automation. Enrich content, integration with channel services and softwares, and total flexibility. Okay, so enrich content links in with quality score, links in with what we're trying to do in the, uh, with the message of giving end customers the most possible price information that they could need to make an informed decision for a purchase with you. Okay, integration with channel services and softwares with total flexibility. This is par and parcel. Uh, again, really, really important to a system, to any type of system, really. If we want to integrate and pull data from an ERP system, for example, or a CMS system, and then push it out to an Amazon, to a Magento, to a Shopify, to a big commerce, to stuff like that, right? Or even to an InDesign catalog, whether you're using a third-party tool to link it to the browser or however you want to do it, it's about integrating seamlessly with those channels. And a, and a system, our system in this particular case, can absolutely do that with no issue whatsoever. And total flexibility brings it full circle altogether to be able to say, well, our system really does have the ability to say, marketing teams, product teams, procurement teams, accounts, everybody who does not understand code, the flexibility to be able to use a system like this with ease. So if I want to change and I want to edit uh, a, um, excuse me, a product, uh, a product name, or even a, pro a description of a product, I can create that field myself. I can then edit, edit that field. If I need to put it in, uh, in rich text or HTML, I can do that. Okay, so total flexibility across the board. Next steps, how brands and digital retail, sorry, how brands and retailers can win the digital shelf. So, Coming back to customer experience, customer behavior, channel uh, ubiquity, I really always struggle with that word, That's a commercial network and business policies. Okay, so customer experience, really, really important. What is the customer experiencing on your website? What has their experience been shopping with you if you do have an e-commerce or a marketplace? Okay, 
their behavior predictive analysis of, of the uh, of the user experience on your uh, on your website marketplace whatever the sales channel is ubiquity i think i said that right this time centralization and collaboration so centralization of uh, all that that product all those products in sorry all that product information and digital assets to where it actually needs to be collaboration from teams internally saying actually you know what i think this would probably be a little bit better can we get this approved or can we get this this changed around commercial network to hyper auto uh, excuse me hyper automation automating all the changes that you need to make within a particular system to then go out to all of your different sales channels simultaneously when those changes are made and business policies transparency and efficiency transparency of what actually is going on with the product info where is it uh, how are we doing with it is it quality data is it not do we need to touch up somewhere and to be able to do all of that completely efficiently well, that's all for me today um, if you have any questions please put them in the the chat box below and uh, we'll do our best to get back to you i hope you have a wonderful day